going on here? Hello? Hi. Marion, Marion Crane. Marion? You work with my sister, Lucy Spaulding? Yes, that's right, Lucy's friend. What are you doing here? Well, I... Uh... Well, you're not alone, are you? Uh, yes, I am. Well, nobody should be at these docks at this hour. You're so right. Thank goodness it's you. You have no idea how afraid I am. Abigail is smitten by Dr. Rick Bauer. Well, I'm sure it's just a passing fancy. She'll get over it as soon as we go somewhere else. You don't know Abigail. She's very stubborn. Reva, if you give in to her on this, you're a fool. And you're a liar. Where did that come from? You told me so yourself, remember? But I'm not lying now. Then why are you so angry about our going back to Springfield? Is this about Abigail or me? The world doesn't revolve around you, Reva. Then explain why you're so hell-bent on keeping me out of Springfield. Is there something there that you're afraid I'll find? Vanessa! Hi. Yeah, it's Josh. Uh, well, I'm a few thousand miles up in the air in the private jet on my way to Mexico. Did you talk to Daddy? Yeah, yeah, he uh, pretty much convinced me that I've been a jerk with Annie. But no, no, your advice didn't hurt either. I just, uh, I'm heading down. I'm going to try and find her and uh, throw myself at her feet and beg forgiveness. With any luck, she won't uh, slam the hotel door in my face before I get a chance. That was a, uh, a kiss between two people who really care about each other. We came here to get a divorce. Honey, we're still married. Now, come on, we're not the first exes to fall back in each other's arms. Come on. Yeah, like an old, comfortable habit, I guess. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. No, it's okay. Believe me, I've said things that haven't come out right either. You know, as I remember, it was a pretty good habit. <laughs> it was a great habit. Yeah. We never had a problem with that, did we? No. We had, we had some good times, didn't we? I mean, you think back uh, from the very beginning, and we, we, we had it pretty good. And it was terrific. <laughs> remember those times that we'd lie in bed just oh. talking about anything and everything? We laughed so much. I don't think I've ever laughed that much in my life. It was pretty close to perfect, wasn't it? Hey, remember my neat Nick face? That 
That was a tough one. <laughs> I mean, I, I had to completely retrain you from the very from scratch. Me. I retrained you. Do you remember those old smelly sneakers that you used to wear? Those around sneakers the were my children. Oh. They were my children. They were a part of me, and you threw them in the hallway like no, they were nothing. No, I threw them I outside of the that. building because I was afraid if you brought them in, we'd get evicted. <laughs> Do they really smell like that? <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me through all those bad times. What's a husband for? You are the best soon-to-be ex-husband a girl could ask for. Thanks. Why are you looking at me like that? You look as beautiful right now. the day I married you. I, um, I got lost. I'm terrible with directions. It's the worst. I've been looking for what seems like hours. Uh, well, what are you looking for? Um, slip number, uh, 13. You'd think they wouldn't use that number. <laughs> That's L. Michael Spalding's mooring place. Oh, you, you know it. Yes, of course. I, I think everyone in town must know that one. Why would you be calling on him at, uh, this hour? Do you think it's a bad idea? I, I, I would hate to be in trouble with my boss. I, you see, I, I thought I would be uh, of some comfort about your sister, I mean. Um, I imagine she'd be with him. How do you know about Lucy? Well, I was by your uh, family's diner tonight. I saw your dad. And also, Lucy told me about the test before she even took it. Well, she's, uh, she's very private about certain things, though. No, not with me. We've gotten pretty close at work, you see. Um, I can't tell you how upset I am about this whole HIV thing. You know, I couldn't sleep. Just the thought of your sweet sister going through such agony. I just had to come down and get up out of my bed and get dressed and come see if she was all right. Well, I don't think she's here, though. Well, where else would she be? She and Alan Michael are, are so in love. Well, I'll be sure to tell her, though. I mean, I'm sure she'll appreciate your concern, but Mary and I don't think tonight's a good night. Of course. Whatever you think's best. Oh, oh, dear, you think I'm pushy, don't you? No, just more careless than anything else. Yes, you're, you're right. I, 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 I don't know what I was thinking. I, aside from being a bother to Lucy, I, uh, I'm taking a terrible chance coming here. You know, every woman must think it'll never happen to her. Good night. But, uh, but you know better. I beg your pardon? Well, a couple weeks ago, when my sister's car was attacked, uh, we came by Spalding, Cutter and I, and we asked you a bunch of questions, and you seemed to get real upset, and Lucy stopped us. She said that something uh, bad had happened to you. Yes, well, there it is again, that thoughtfulness of yours. Well, I have to ask myself, I mean, what are you doing at this place? Well, I would do anything for Lucy. Well, some bad things have happened here, Marion. Yes, I can imagine the doc must attract a rather unsavory lot. You haven't seen anything suspicious, have you? I mean, the police are still, you know, combing this place. And what was the crime? Murder. Oh, I'm so glad you're still awake. Yeah, I, I am, but please, Lucy. I am isn't. so angry, I could scream. Oh, please, Stella, huh? Your father, your father has no shame. I mean, no scruples whatsoever. How long is this going to go on? When is this gonna stop? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Does this have anything to do with Amanda showing up at the meeting the other day? Well, one might say it does. <laughs> Between your sister showing up and my brother's idiocy, I'm amazed I'm still standing, but I assure you, I will not go down without a fight. This is not the night for this, okay? Helen Michael, you'll go down, too. That's exactly what he wants. He wants to strip us both of everything. Well, I am not concerned with what my father has done with his shares of Spalding. Helen <laughs> Michael, you don't know anything about this. I saw with my own eyes. The man is, is he, he's mad. He's totally mad. Now, you've got to back me on this. You have to help me have, have him declared legally insane. So what is it you think that I'm keeping from you, Reva? There must be something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so against my going home to Springfield. Home? I thought home was a place where you feel welcome. Well, it would set that place on its ear. Might be a lot of people who wouldn't like the idea that I'd risen from the dead. But why should that matter to you either way? I don't want to see you hurt again. Your ex-husband is about to marry another woman. Oh, from what I remember, 
That's nothing new to Reva Shane. I'll deal with it. Oh, you'll deal with it. Just like that. Just like you dealt with it in the past. Do you remember that you went through hell when that happened? It hurt you so deeply you wanted to die. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember. Well, then why do you want to go through it again? Joshua walked out on you time and time again. All you had to do was disappoint him, and he was out the door. Do you remember the pain you went through? Yes. And do you think the people back in Springfield have changed? Oh, no, no, no. They're more judgmental, more self-righteous, more unforgiving than ever. Do you think that they've forgotten the slut of Springfield? Well, I don't care. Again. I don't care if they call, call me bad names or if they look at me and whisper. They, they could pin a big red A on my chest and parade me through town. Why does it matter to you anyway? Don't you get it? It matters to me because I love you. What did you say? I said, I love you. I don't think I've ever stopped loving you. Am I supposed to believe that? Why else would I have said it? Because you're Alan Spaulding, a man who usually has an ulterior motive. Well, you're Reva Shane, who is always very suspicious. I'm a very smart woman. You want me to leave Springfield so you think you can just utter those three magic little words. Well, forget it, Alan. I'm not as naive as you think. No, you're very smart, but you're wrong on this one, Reva. And if you'll just come off of your high horse, you'll realize that your theory is full of holes. Name one. All right. For one, I was the only person in Springfield who never turned their back on you, who never let you down, even when you were at your rock bottom, because I understood your sinful little soul, and I loved you anyway. You were as sinful as I was. Well, I didn't say I wasn't, but I never let you down. Oh, so you think our shared misdeeds bind us together forever? Is that what you think? Well, relationships have been built on a lot less. Look, I'm doing this for you, Reva, not me. I want to protect you. I don't want you to ever be hurt like that again as long as you live. Abigail is not a sinner. She is good. She's innocent. Um, you're changing the subject. To one that makes sense. What am I supposed to say to that? Of course she's good. I mean, you mean a great deal to her. Yes, as she does to me. She trusts me. She relies on me. That's not the point. If Springfield is what she wants... Abigail then... matters to me also, but we can help her together, but not in Springfield. Why should I even listen to you? I can only give you one good reason why you should listen to me. It's because I love you. Reva, look at this place. Look at us. You and I, in the past, in another place, have committed more transgressions well, enough to stagger this entire community. But we're different now. We're committed to change, starting a new life. Why can't we have it together? You haven't asked me if I love you. Doesn't that matter to you? For the first time in my life, I'm not asking for anything in return. You're the only thing that matters to me. And if you someday care for me as much as I care for you, I will be the happiest man on earth. What is it, Reva? You don't trust me? I'm not sure. I, I just have something floating around in the back of my brain, and I can't quite put my finger on it. Look, if it has to do with Abigail, I, I'm sure... <laughs> at this hour. Do, do you have a bad dream? My baby did. Your, oh, your doll baby? Oh, bet she's dreaming about big old black bears and, and, and monsters with green eyes and teeth, huh? <laughs> she's not feeling well. Well, let's, let's see if we can't fix that. Is she real sick? Sort of. Well, where's it hurt? Tummy, maybe, like yours did? It's not her tummy. Oh, well, now, let... Oh, no fever. No spots. I better know what it is. What? 
think maybe she's lonely? For her mama. She was calling for her. Well, well let's hit then. Here. You miss your mama too, don't you? A lot. Why don't you tell me about it? Maybe it'll it'll make your baby feel better. Sometimes I miss her more than other times. Like when? Like when I wake up in the dark. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Feel a little scared, maybe. Want your mama to tell you there's no reason to be afraid. Mommies make everything okay. Yeah, they sure do, honey. That's why the good Lord gave them to us. He took mine away. I thought I was gonna have a new one. I'm not. I'm never gonna have a mommy again. You know, I'm gonna take another look at that... at that baby of yours. You know, on second thought, yeah, this might be a serious case of uh, cookies and milkitis. Do doll babies get that all the time. Can you fix that? You betcha. You. Yeah. I reckon that we can find the cure for that <clears throat> right out here in the old kitchen. You be real quiet, though. If your daddy hears us roaming around in the middle of the night, he'll tan my hide. I don't know what to say. You've always been so wonderful, such a comfort. But I should just quit while I'm ahead. Rick, right? I love what we have together. I love the friendship. I love the respect. We fought hard and long for this. I know, this. and we got the battle scars to prove and it. And it means a lot to me. Me too. You know, it wouldn't be hard to just fall into your arms again for one more night. We just wake up in the morning and regret it, right? Rick, please, don't kid about it. It's what I am talking about, and you know it's true. We fought too hard for this. I don't want to lose you. Not again. What if that wouldn't happen, Annie? Rick, I don't want You're to You're talking about risk. a one-night thing. What if it just wasn't for one night? Would that make you feel any different? Guiding light in a moment. Thursday night, it's a CBS special presentation of The Young and the Restless After Murder, She Wrote. Daytime intrigue at a primetime hour. Thursday night. This is CBS. <laughs> Rick, what are you trying to say? What You're not a, asking me to... What I'm trying to say. What is... Eddie! And it's Josh. Oh my gosh! What? You, it's, you want me to open the door? Josh, it came. You're in there. Hey, who's here? Hi, how you doing? Hey, uh, Rick, you're here. Good. I'm here. Yeah, your uh, your service told me uh, where I could find you. You might want to think about getting a new service. Uh, can I can I come in? Of course. Thank you. Thank you. I know how this must look. I doubt it. I, I have something I want to say to you, though, to both of you, actually. I, I thought we, uh, we covered everything at the airport. I mean, did you just think of something after the well, plane left? Well, I remember that uh, I was behaving like a jerk at the hospital, so... Uh, in, in fact, in fact, I've been a Class A dope for quite a while now. And, um, Annie... Uh, whatever. Annie, I don't care about your past. I accept you completely, fully. I accept everything that you are, everything that you have ever, have ever done, and everything that you ever will do. I love you with all my heart and with all my soul, Annie. And now, I was thinking on the plane flight down here, I was thinking of a hundred different ways that I could apologize to you, and none of them seemed right. They all seemed pretty lame, considering my actions lately. <laughs> but, but I came to the conclusion that I'm about to throw away the best thing Hear me now, the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And for that, I am so ashamed. And 
I'm so sorry. Can you forgive me? I... I didn't expect this. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> judgmental, self-righteous fool if he promises never to act that way again. Now, now I know I'm asking for something that I don't really deserve. But I have to try. Because if I don't try to win back what we had together and what we can have together, I can never forgive myself. Please, Annie, say If you don't say yes now, I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to convince you that it's not too late. To. No, I will. I'll send you flowers every day for the rest of your... I, I will pick you up at work every single day and take you on long drives and tell you about my dreams of our life together. I, I'll tell you stories about Barr and Shane, so many that, that it'll make you miss them as much as they miss you. I'll, I'll rebuild our Would carousel with my bare hands, nail by nail. You talk too much, you know that. Yes, I do know that. You don't have to do all these things to win me over. You've got me. Of course, I will marry you. I love you. I've never stopped. I uh, have something to say to you, too. I want to apologize. It's okay. No, it's not okay. You have been very good to me and to the people I care the most about. And I just I want to thank you for taking care of Annie. You don't have to thank me, Josh. No hard feelings. Listen to me, Alan Michael. Rick Bauer found your father. Bully for him. Yes, in Goshen, Indiana, a religious community. <sighs> really? Is that right? Alan Michael, this is serious business. Well, I'm sure it's serious to him, too, Alex. Hey, maybe he's going to repent for all of his sins. <sighs> yes, well, his sins are the issue here. Thanks to him, we have Amanda on the loose and Spalding going to hell in a handbasket. Look, you're just angry because my half-sister has all of my share, oh. father's shares of Spalding. <sighs> well, you're damn right I am. But not for long, because now that I know where he is, it's clear to me that he is... He was totally out of his mind when he turned over all of his shares to him. And I know how to get them back. I don't want to hear this, okay? Alan, Michael, you should be thanking me. I'm just... I, I know how to get them. That's it, okay? That's enough. You know, you say you've changed, but you haven't. Just leave, all right, leave now before I lose my temper, all right? What? How can you be so short-sighted? Look, all I'm trying to do is help. Get out, please. I have other things in, the, in my life to think about. Really? What other things? What's more important than a demise of Spalding? I think he means me. Oh, sh I know you two lovers. It's terribly important. Every evening no, you spend together. No, excuse me, Miss Spalding, but I had a test. And it turns out that I'm HIV positive. Yes. I got it when I was raped by Brent Lawrence, one of the up-and-coming Spalding executives. Now, what were you saying about important things? Was, was this the killing that uh, Lucy and Alan Michael were questioned about? Yeah, yeah, right here at this very spot. This happened here? Yeah, it sure did. As a matter of fact, uh, now you see why I don't want you to be down here. Oh, just the thought of something as grotesque as murder makes me sick of my stomach. Are you okay? No, I'm sure I will be. I 
think the best place for me is home. Would you mind terribly giving me a lift? Well, how did you get here? Um, well, I foolishly, I took a taxi. Hey, Cooper, Who's that? That's my partner. Look, just stay tight right here. If you see anything, yell. I'll be right back. I'm coming! Hold on! Like mother, like son. Interfering little worms. The whole Cooper clan in that right hand. I didn't know any of this was going on. Why didn't you tell me? After the way you treated Susan? I don't think so. I overreacted. No, no, first. Alexandra, you were mean-spirited. You never even gave her a chance. Well, I was just worried about Nick. No, you were selfish, Alexandra. It's why you came here tonight. You only see things in terms of your own perspective. Your money, your blasted company, that's all. Lucy? I am so sorry. I'm so very sorry. And I will do anything and everything within my power to help you, both of you. And for no other reason than that I love you, both of you. Yeah, well, so did I. Miss Crane, this is my partner, Nell Clary. Nell, this is Miss Crane. Miss Crane is, uh, works at Spalding with my sister, Lucy. Uh, what are you doing out here? Um, well, actually, she needs a ride home. And, um, I've got some keys here. Marion, why don't you take the keys? My car is parked at the end of the pier there. It's a blue station wagon. Lock yourself in, and we're gonna finish up here, okay? Thank you. Very kind. It's, uh, we, we won't be long, I promise, okay? Uh, let's take a look over here. of the woman's falling saw running away from a murdered rapist. You bet she does. Right down to her auburn hair. Mm. Oh, my gosh. What? The kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got to go tell them. <laughs> Mara's going to be in heaven, isn't oh, she? She'll have to stand in line. Yeah. Uh, I just, um, uh, when can we leave? We can leave whenever you're ready. Well, I want to leave right away. Okay. Okay, I, I, I just have to call Rick. Okay. Okay. Rick? Rick? Hi, uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to banish you. Yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna head out of here. We got a lot of things to tell the kids. Great. Well, there's some flights in the morning, you guys. Can take no, no, no. I brought the jet down. Well, uh, have a safe flight. Yeah, thanks. Uh, one more thing, Rick, about our, our divorce. So, what what do we have to do? Just um, fax me power attorney, and I'll I'll take care of everything. You sure you don't mind? No, this was my idea to begin with. It's uh, great. You're great, Rick. You're really great. I'll go uh, get my stuff. Rick. I don't know how to thank you. Just be good to her, that's all I ask. I will be. I've never heard Abigail speak before. She was seven when she lost her hearing. Well, if she can speak, why doesn't she? She's shy about her voice. She can't hear it, so she doesn't trust it. But there are times when she's asleep that she calls out words that she remembers. Like Mama. Don't worry about it. 
about Abigail. I'll take care of her, I swear. It's not Abigail that I'm upset about. It's... Are you remembering something else? It just seems so clear, and then I... I get to it, and it, it disappears, but I know it's something important. I just know it is. It's something very, very important. Are you sure you don't know what it is? How would I? Look, look. You're very tired. You need some rest. No. I can't sleep until I figure it out. Look, don't torture yourself. You're worried about Abigail. You, you've been working long hours. I'm sure you're just imagining the whole thing. Oh, it just it, it seems so real, so close. It's, it, it's like a part of me. I can't... Hush. Look, I want you to come over here. You need to get some rest. You know, we'll talk about this in the morning. Sweet dreams. Of course I can. Well, why can't they? They don't want to. Don't you understand, Reva? Don't you understand? They've all gone on. I'm the only one that cares. All the others have gone on without you. Well, they know something. They must. All they offer you is pain. Go with me, Reva. You'll never be sad or lonely again. I can't leave until I find out what's missing. What it is I'm looking for. That's what you're looking for, Reva. It's not yours anymore. Let it go. No. I can't. Bud doesn't want you or need you anymore. He has someone else. Can't you see? It's not Bud. It, it, it's something else. And if you care for me, you'll help me. Please help me find it. going to be intrusive at all. I just hope that you feel like you can come to me for anything you need, anything you want. And I mean that. Thank you. The only thing that Lucy needs right now is to just listen to the advice of her doctors and her counselor. Yes, of course. I need to take a second test to confirm the results. Then I'll start treatment and then we'll see. Well, just don't forget I'm around, huh? I know what. I'm not quite the ogre I sometimes appear to be. We know that. I hope so. Well, I'm gonna get out of your hair. Alex. No, thank you. <laughs> you and Lucy are right. Sometimes I forget the most important thing. 
So you worry about her, nothing else. paycheck on it. Okay, you got it. And I'll prove it. But first, first, we call Cutter and ask if we can bring Marion down to the station for questions. Oh, hold on. Now I know you're looped. A tall woman wearing a wig proves nothing. Oh, come off it, Culper. You're thinking the same thing I Okay, yes, it's a little weird that she was down here around the docks and all that, but we have no reason to bring her in. We need probable cause. Hey, if you think I'm going to sit on my All I'm saying bring... is that we really need to be smart about this. Somebody's got to chat the babe up on the way home. I vote for me. Bye. Hey, hey wait up, Cooper. I can hardly wait to see Mara's face when we uh, walk into the house together. What are we going to tell her? Why? What, what do you mean? Well, you know, we were engaged and then we weren't engaged and... And now? Now what are we? Well, I don't know. Really, I am. Um... What is this right here? Look at that. <laughs> Josh. What a coincidence. <laughs> you are such a devil. Will you marry me, Annie? Give me a finger over here. Well, I guess I have to. I mean, how else are we going to explain it tomorrow? <laughs> Car turnover. Mama's gonna buy you a doggy named Rover. Don't stop, Papa. Oh, I thought you was asleep. We were listening to your song. It's Annie's favorite. Annie? That's my doll's name. Oh. My real mama gave her to me. But one time when she was sick, Annie fixed her for me. So I changed her name to Annie. Now maybe I'll have to change it again. Names are special. As special as the people that get them. Like you, for instance. Now, Reba, your mama was real clever when, when she thought up your name. What'd she do? Didn't your daddy ever tell you the story? Tell me again. Well, she couldn't figure out what in the world to call you. And she thought, and she thought, and then she got the best idea. She took her mama's name, Sarah, and combined it with your daddy's mama's name. Miss Martha, right? That's right. Martha and Sarah. And the name came out Mara. Pretty nifty, huh? I guess so. You like your name, don't you? It's okay. I like Annie better. Oh. oh, honey. Some things are meant to be, some weren't. Reva and your daddy, they were meant to be. But your daddy and Annie... Don't say anything bad about me. No, 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 sweetie lump. No, that's the last thing in the world I would want to be. Do you know? As nice as Annie is, she and your daddy just weren't cut out for the long haul. Martha. It has something to do with Martha. Martha and Sarah, but I, just, I don't know what it means. Stop. That's enough. No, please. Please, let me stay. Let me... I've got to figure this out. You're wasting your time. They don't give a damn. I don't care. I have to find out what it is I'm looking for. Pop. Pop, you'll tell me. you got to tell me what it is. I, I, I don't know what it is that I'm looking for. What? what, what you got to tell me what it is I want to know. Do you like your doll? 
What are you going to call her? This has been Guiding Light. Scarves by Bonnie. It's as shocking as ever a streetcar named Desire. Jessica Lang, Alec Baldwin, and John Goodman star in the all-new CBS Playhouse 90 presentation, Sunday on CBS. <laughs>